morning. Happy Saturday. Oh my goodness, y'all. Pardon me, I'm making me some smart coffee because I need it. I am having a morning or a day, an afternoon. The worst luck, could you believe? So it's like 5.30 a.m., right? My butt's back at work, hence the plenty smart coffees. We found these at Grocery Outlet. Well, they've been there for a while, but we were kind of like a little bit, because it just says, well, first of all, we never saw the top line that said premium Arabica coffee. We just saw the Sage um, Coat go to cola and the brahmi flower and we were like oh i don't know about that that might be really herby tasting kind of thing more like tea um but i'm surprised it i did this on my craig in just the lowest setting because i wanted super strong espresso the best i could get on this little b31 they have here at work it's not my fancy smanshi big huge Craig that does all kinds of stuff but still it brews a cup of coffee this and this is a cup of coffee it smells it tastes like coffee it's too hot it's like steaming so I'm not gonna drink it right now but I uh, brewed some at home but then I put um, oat milk in it this different oat milk that I had for like coffee creamer and it uh, the oat milk was so rich and so creamy that it kind of watered down my coffee. That's good to coffee. I was surprised. Plan tea. I am surprised. This is actually some pretty bomb-ass coffee cups. They're just little K-cups like this. Yeah, sweet. Not what I came on to say, but yeah. We just discovered those. We got them for 97 cents. 97 cents for 24 K cups. Holla, grocery outlet, bargain market. Love ya. Okay, enough of that. So, yeah, drama, drama, drama. So, assholes. I had to get that out of the way, but someone left a, um, I forgot what it was called. Now, my ex-husband told me about this a couple years ago. This is how I know about it. Um, Clint Gadeek, he used to do this kind of BS. Um, so I went to go check my mail yesterday, and I had this, this truck that was just on my butt tailgating me. They always like to, like, take the road that I turn on to my house. They like to take it, like, 50 miles an hour. <sighs> Don't ask me why. It's a freaking rural road, you know? So I keep having my brakes, hit my brakes on them, slow down, got my turn signal on, everything. Dude would not back off. So I had to like just go and turn. And it dropped down a little bit because it goes from like asphalt to gravel to where my mailbox is at. And um, as soon as I got my, my rear end off of that into the gravel, I realized, shit, I ran over something. And I'm like, fuck. I got out of my car because I'm like, what did I hit, you know? And I see a little Baskin Robbins ice cream container, the lid part of it. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know, it's just a lid. But then off off into the bushes, there's like ivy bushes and um, blackberry vines, wild grapes and stuff right behind the mailboxes. And um, so I see like an, another Baskin Robbins container and a big fat pine cone with some spiky shit sticking out of it. And I'm like, motherfuckers, motherfuckers. So, my ex told me when he was homeless um, that him and some friends, I guess this was a thing that some like the homeless people around here like to do. <sighs> Jackasses. They stick nails and screws and sharp things and like, empty paper cups and pine cones and lay them on the road for people who are driving to run over and possibly get a blowout. Lovely, huh? Aren't people so kind and considerate of others? So, sorry, I'm trying to put my phone down somewhere. I didn't get a blowout, 
Thank you, Jesus. I did, however, catch a huge ass screw in my rear passenger tire on the inside of it, which is how I knew I caught something because I kept hearing this. Let me see. It was like a click, 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 click. You know, every time, like every tire rotation was click, 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 click. I thought something got caught up in my tire um, or in my axle because I've had that happen before. Um, pieces of wood don't run over shit even a plastic bag um i was driving my dad's car one time and there was like a plastic storage grocery bag in the freeway and it blew up underneath the car and it didn't blow out and it got stuck under wrapped around the engine and it freaking melted into the engine and caused my dad some damage and i had to replace the fucking engine Holy huh so yeah so luckily, my dad and my brothers, being the godsons that they are, one of them was able to screw in the screw because we couldn't take it out. Because as soon as we wiggled it, it went and I'm like, fuck it, punctured it. I was kind of hoping it just kind of went in a little bit and I could pull it. No, this sucker was like a freaking, it's a freaking long one. So I'm st stuck without a car. <laughs> my dad took me to work this morning. Thank you, Daddy. You got up freaking way too early just to take your big girl to work. I love you forever. Hope you make it home safely. And my um, other brother, my oldest brother, loaned me his uh, tire compressor, air compressor, so I was able to air up my tire. Because, yeah, sure enough, as soon as I got, you know, up this morning, my tire was flat. I was like, damn it. Because me was like, well, maybe I could just, you know, instead of disturbing everybody, even though my dad already said he would take me to work in the morning, I was like, maybe I can just start the car, drive really slowly, because it's super early, no one's really out, and um, the tire shops, you know, there's two of them across from my work. So I was like, maybe I'll just do that. But yeah, I got out. There was a flat tire, so I used a compressor to start um, filling it up. But I've never used this kind of compressor before, so I was like... I didn't know, like it, it said the PSI on it, and I'm like, I don't know if that was the amount of pressure it was putting into the car, or if that was like what my tire pressure was at. So I kept filling, and I'm like, yeah, it's, oh, it's working, because it's getting harder and harder, but then I'm like, how many PSI does my tire take, you know? At like 17, 16 and a half, 17 pounds, it was pretty full looking and feeling. But then I'm like, when I used like, the gas station ones I had to fill my car up to like 30 I think 31 or something like that so luckily my dad heard the compressor and he came out right away with his car keys and was like you're gonna drive like drive his car you know and I was like, I was like yeah I'll, I'll drive drive his car to work so he rode with me we carpooled I drove and then he drove himself home and then he's gonna take get this my daddy my daddy's going to take my car in to get it fixed and pay for it. God bless you, daddy. <sighs> he can't afford it any more than I can. So I'm feeling really, really guilty. Because my dad's on a fixed income too, but he's on social security. So being in the first, he just got his paycheck. I don't get paid for another week. So I'm like, ugh, scraping things. Everyone's due already. So I'm I don't know. Anyone want to buy some feet picks? <laughs> gonna make some money. I gotta do something. It sucks. Yeah. I mean, I've been pulling a few extra hours here at work. Not much though. Just like two hours here, two hours there, an hour here. Um, just you know what I can get that I'm not scheduled for picking up the shift little part-time hour here or there, but I've been meaning to apply for that stupid job for the grocery store. I think it's called the Briar Patch. And it was, it's like a co-op that just opened here on, like, off of Bell Avenue in Auburn. It's next to Old Navy that also just opened up here, you know, the last year or two. Uh, yeah, so right there on Bell Avenue where like the McDonald's and there's like um, Spirit Halloween's anchors in there. 
so yeah, lots, lots of stuff there. And they have a couple jobs that are opened up. One at, that pays pretty damn good, like starting is like thirty to forty dollars an hour. Uh, yeah, it's like kind of for what I'm doing here. It's like janitorial manager or something like. They don't call it janitorial manager. They have some other word for it, but one of the duties is like managing all the other cleaning staff and shipping and receiving and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's that's what I do here. But I am getting paid thirty to forty dollars an hour. For <laughs> the only catch is um, they want you to have a, uh, a forklift um, certificate, and I don't have one of those. Hell, I don't even know where I would go to get one of those. There's a lot of construction companies around where I live, so I mean, I guess I could just go and ask someone. But if that's something that they would train and pay to train. Better off doing it that way. Especially because we all know how good I am about following through, right? I mean, I paid to do my manager's certificate training, took the course and everything, but uh, then the pandemic hit, and so the test became remote, and I just <laughs> never did the test. Luckily, it hasn't expired, so you know, I can take the test anytime. I even bought a freaking computer. <laughs> I bought a computer in December. How long ago was that? Just so I could take this stupid test because they have like a lot of really strict requirements. That was another thing. You have to be like in a closed room with nobody around you. And I live in a tiny house with three other children. <laughs> there is no privacy or no room that has nobody in it. And I think, like, you needed a mirror. So it was, it was, like, a lot of hassle kind of stuff. And I'm not the only one. Help the, the, man, the assistant GA manager or whatever that is currently working here. He might have finally got it. But I know he was still, like, needing to follow through and take his test, too. And I was like, both of you need to take your test. And I'm like, I know. Hello. I'll get around to it. <laughs> Oh, sounds like my delivery's here, finally. So, catch you guys on the flip side.